Hi there and welcome to the Dawn Show. We are live and we are local. Dawn Stensland Menti here. Today I just want to warn you uh, in case you have little kids uh, in, the, in the house with you. Today's topic is sensitive and some of the images are graphic but this is something I think we need to talk about because we're talking about the Philadelphia State Hospital Byberry with author John Webster. His book is called The Philadelphia State Hospital at Byberry. And it's a, a history of misery and medicine. And John, I, I want to welcome you here today to the Dawn Show. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I think it's interesting that you, you talk about the history of the hospital, but what's also amazing to me is what you discovered in here and the emotional journey that it really tells us a lot about human nature, people who stepped up and how they ended up in this hospital and how they ended up exposing uh, the, the horrific things that were happening inside the hospital. Yes, um, I, I was obsessed with the place. Um, but why? I mean, that's the thing. You're you're a re you're a young guy, and you know when I fir when I first met you, you know, and I read the book, and it's a wonderful history. It's a ton of research, but why? Why? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I uh, some friends had taken me in there in about 2002, and uh, the environment that I was treated to was unlike anything I'd ever seen, and um, I basically wanted to know why is this structure here? Why is it, you know, w what was the point of all of this? Right. And, and you talked about even the, the smell, uh, yeah. even all these years later. Um, this was a facility that you said was built in 1926. So, mm. And I love the way you, you talk about relating it to the, the Philadelphia history and even the way we've taken care of back to the days of William Penn to taking care of those who have mental illness um, or, or you know things that today we integrate uh, folks into society and we have we have such thank goodness um, more open loving minds but back in the day uh, there was a huge amount of discrimination and ignorance and you really address that as well. Yeah well it, um, I was shocked by what I heard about it, um, and that just intrigued me, you know, ten times more. So um, digging into the history of it uh, w just opened one door after the other, and it kind of seemed to triple my obsession in the process. And you know, what's interesting is what you found out was. And there were people who were, during World War II, who were uh, conscientious uh, objectors. Of course, mm. we have a lot of Quakers in this area. And so they didn't, you know, did not want to go to war because that was against their religion. So they ended up as volunteers, as attendants in this place. And mm. they ended up ultimately uh, taking photographs, turning to citizen journalism, really, uh, to speak out for the people who were being abused inside of here. And if they hadn't? Who knows how long uh, it, you know, would have continued. I mean, um, the state and the city sure were not about to let the truth come out. Mm -hmm. uh, and still today, it's difficult t to research it because uh, a lot of the information has been dis destroyed. destroyed or lost. Yeah, and you're, I mean, in the back of the book, you know, you, you list the extensive research that you did and all of your sourcing and everything. You obviously worked hard, and it's beautifully written as well. Um, but I, I just found it in the end of the book, and you talk about the emotional journey. This, this was emotional for you as you discovered what happened there and the, the disappointing level of corruption that was going on uh, with, the, with the gangs and the gangster mm. mentality and that sort of thing, people who profited um, off of those who were less fortunate, mentally ill, and so on and so forth. Uh, but at the right. same time, the humanity. I mean, did it change you as a human being, John? Well, uh, I don't think uh, when I started, I didn't exactly understand m m man's inhumanity to, yeah. to man as much and uh, it seems like wherever that happens there are people who uh, stand up for the little guy. 
Yeah, I hate so, to quote Starman, the, one of my kids' favorite movies, my husband. But, you know, he says, uh, what I love about most about your species is you're at your best when you're at your worst. Mm. And in, in a way, it's, it seems like that, that, you know, that there were people who just stepped up. What is amazing to me is that our producers set up the show and that there are two gentlemen here who were attendants. Yes. Uh, even though you wrote about them and, and many of the attendants like them, this is the first time on live television here on WMCN-TV that you're going to meet them. And so it's going to be a, a, a treat, and I know you're looking forward to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's, uh, that's a very surreal experience. <laughs> Aw. Well, it's, it's going to be special uh, when the Dawn Show Thank continues you. right here on WMCN-TV. Be right back.